Here's a question most men are too embarrassed to ask their doctor. Is there an optimal frequency for intimacy and release after 60? Are you doing it too much? Not enough? Does it even matter for your health? Well, science actually has an answer. And it might surprise you because the research shows that frequency does matter, but not in the way most men think. Today, I'm giving you the honest, research-backed answer that addresses your prostate health, your cardiovascular function, your hormone balance, and your overall well-being. Hit that like button right now and drop a comment telling me where you're watching from because this is information every man over 60 deserves to have. Here's what most men don't know. The scientific research on this topic is actually quite clear. And it challenges a lot of the myths and assumptions men carry, both the idea that frequent activity is harmful and the opposite idea that abstaining has special benefits. I'm Dr. Narita, and I've spent 12 years as a urologist having these exact conversations with men who want to understand what's actually best for their health. And here's what the research shows. Regular activity and release, whether with a partner or solo, is associated with significant health benefits, particularly for prostate health. The biggest myth I hear is, I'm older now, so I should just accept that this part of my life is over. That's not what the science says. In fact, staying active in this area supports your physical health, your mental health, and your relationship quality. Another myth. Frequent release depletes testosterone or vital energy. Also not true. Your body is designed to produce and release regularly. It's a normal, healthy function, not something that drains you or weakens you when done appropriately. The truth, backed by multiple large-scale studies, is that men who maintain regular activity throughout their lives have better prostate health, better cardiovascular function, better hormone balance, and even lower risk of certain diseases. So what's the optimal frequency? The research suggests a range, not a single number. And it depends on your individual health, your relationship status, and what feels right for your body. In my 12 years of practice, I've reviewed countless studies on this topic and discussed it with thousands of patients. And I can tell you this with confidence. Maintaining a healthy, active, intimate life at whatever frequency works for you is part of comprehensive wellness after 60. So here's what we're doing today. I'm sharing what the research actually says about optimal frequency, broken down by specific health benefits. Then I'm addressing five common concerns men have about this topic and clearing up the misconceptions. And if you stick with me until the end, I'm revealing the one approach that absolutely does harm your health, and it's something many men unknowingly fall into. All right, let's talk about what the science actually says. For prostate health, one of the largest and most respected studies on this topic was published in the journal European Urology. Researchers followed nearly 32,000 men for 18 years, tracking their frequency of activity and their prostate health outcomes. Here's what they found. Men who released 21 or more times per month had approximately 20% lower risk of prostate cancer compared to men who released four to seven times per month. Another study published in JAMA found similar results. Higher frequency was associated with lower prostate cancer risk, particularly for older men. The biological mechanism makes sense. Regular release helps flush out potentially harmful substances from the prostate. It prevents stagnation. It maintains healthy prostate function. Think of it like exercising a muscle. Regular activity keeps the system healthy and functioning optimally. For cardiovascular health, Research published in the American Journal of Cardiology found that men who maintained regular intimate activity had better cardiovascular health markers and lower risk of heart disease. Why? Because intimate activity is physical activity. It increases heart rate, improves circulation, and supports vascular function. It's exercise for your cardiovascular system. For hormone balance, regular activity supports healthy testosterone levels. Contrary to the myth that release depletes testosterone, research shows that regular activity helps maintain hormonal balance and can even support testosterone production through the feedback loops in your endocrine system. For mental health, multiple studies show that men who maintain active, intimate lives report better mood, lower rates of depression and anxiety, and higher overall life satisfaction. The biological reason Intimate activity and release trigger the release of endorphins, oxytocin, and dopamine neurochemicals that support mood, bonding, and overall well-being. So, what's the optimal frequency? Based on the research, here's what we know. 
For prostate health specifically, the studies suggest that 21 plus times per month, roughly five times per week, is associated with the greatest protective benefit. But here's the important caveat. This is an average from large population studies. Individual needs vary. Some men feel best with more frequency, some with less. The key is regularity and consistency, not hitting some arbitrary number. If you're currently at a much lower frequency, say once or twice a month, gradually increasing toward two to three times per week would likely provide significant health benefits. And here's what matters most. This can be with a partner or solo. The health benefits apply to both. Now let me address five common concerns men have about this topic, because understanding these will help you approach this with confidence and clarity instead of worry or shame. I don't have a partner, does this still apply to me? Absolutely. The health benefits, particularly for prostate health, apply whether you're with a partner or solo. Here's the biology. Your prostate doesn't know the difference. The flushing effect, the hormonal response, the cardiovascular benefits, they all occur regardless of whether you're with someone else. Emotionally, I know some men feel awkward about this topic when they're not in a relationship, but solo activity is normal, healthy, and beneficial at any age. It's not something to feel embarrassed about, it's part of maintaining your health. Practically, if you don't have a partner, maintaining regular solo activity two to four times per week supports your prostate health, circulation, and hormone balance. I've had countless patients who were single or widowed express relief when I told them it's not just okay, but actually beneficial to stay active in this way. One 68-year-old patient told me, Dr. Narita, I thought I was supposed to just stop thinking about all of this. I'm glad to know staying active is actually good for me. What if I can't perform as often as the studies suggest? This is a very common concern. And here's the important thing to understand. The research shows association, not a rigid prescription. If physical limitations make frequent activity difficult, that's okay. The goal isn't to force yourself to hit some number regardless of how you feel. But here's what you can do. Focus on improving the underlying factors that affect function, circulation, hormone balance, cardiovascular health, stress management. As those improve, natural frequency often increases. Biologically, if you're struggling with function, that's a signal to address cardiovascular health, possibly get testosterone checked, and consider natural or medical interventions that support healthy function. Emotionally, don't let the research create pressure or anxiety. Anxiety makes everything worse. Instead, use it as motivation to optimize your overall health. Practically, even if you're currently at a lower frequency, any increase is beneficial. Moving from once a month to once a week is progress. Moving from once a week to twice a week is progress. I had a 64-year-old patient who was averaging once a month due to circulation issues. We addressed his cardiovascular health, naturally diet, exercise, stress management. Six months later, he was at two to three times per week and feeling significantly better overall. I've heard that frequent release depletes energy or testosterone, is that true? No, this is a myth that's been thoroughly debunked by research. Here's the biology. Your body produces sperm and seminal fluid continuously. Release doesn't deplete your testosterone or your energy in any meaningful way. Your body is designed to do this regularly. In fact, regular activity can support testosterone production through hormonal feedback loops. Abstaining for long periods doesn't increase testosterone. It can actually lead to lower levels due to reduced hormonal signaling. The myth likely comes from misunderstanding temporary post-release fatigue, which is a normal neurochemical response prolactin release that helps you relax and sleep. It's not depletion, it's your body's natural relaxation response. Emotionally, letting go of this myth is liberating. You don't need to ration or restrict natural, healthy activity out of fear of depletion. Practically, if you feel chronically fatigued, that's not from healthy activity, it's from poor sleep, poor nutrition, stress, or underlying health issues that need addressing. My partner isn't interested as often what should I do. This is one of the most common relationship challenges after 60, and it requires communication and understanding. First, understand that mismatch drive is normal and common. It doesn't mean something is wrong with either of you. Here's the biology. Hormone levels, stress, medications, health conditions, all of these affect drive differently in different people. Emotionally, this can create tension, misunderstanding, and feelings of rejection on both sides. The key is honest, 
compassionate communication. Practically, here's what you can do. Talk openly with your partner about your needs and theirs. Find compromise. Intimacy doesn't always have to mean full activity. There are many ways to maintain connection and closeness. And understand that solo activity can supplement partnered activity when frequencies don't match. This isn't a failure or a problem. It's a practical solution that maintains your health while respecting your partner's needs. I've counseled many couples on this topic. The ones who navigate it successfully are those who communicate without blame, maintain physical affection and connection, and find creative compromises that work for both. What if I have prostate issues already? Does this still help? This is an important question, and the answer depends on the specific condition. For benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH prostate enlargement regular activity generally helps. It reduces congestion, maintains blood flow, and supports healthy prostate function. For prostatitis, prostate inflammation, some men find that activity helps reduce discomfort while others find it irritating. Listen to your body. For prostate cancer or post-treatment recovery, follow your doctor's guidance. Generally, once you're healed and cleared by your medical team, resuming activity is beneficial. The key is this. If you have diagnosed prostate issues, work with your urologist. But in most cases, staying active is part of maintaining health, not something to avoid. Now, here's the approach that actually harms your health. It's complete avoidance and withdrawal from intimate activity due to fear, embarrassment, or the belief that I'm too old for this. When men completely shut down this part of their lives, several things happen. Biologically, circulation to those tissues decreases, tissue health declines, hormone signaling changes, prostate congestion can worsen. Emotionally, withdrawal creates distance in relationships, affects mood and self-esteem, reinforces the belief that vitality is gone. Practically, avoidance creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. The less you engage, the harder it becomes to engage, which leads to more avoidance. I've seen men in their 60s and 70s who withdrew completely, thinking they were supposed to. Years later, they regretted it deeply. One patient told me, I wish someone had told me I didn't have to give up this part of my life. I just accepted it was over. Don't accept decline when there are options. Here's your action plan. Number one, if you're currently inactive or very infrequent, aim to gradually increase toward two to three times per week, whether with a partner or solo. Number two, focus on overall health, cardiovascular, hormonal, mental, as these support natural function and drive. Number three, if you have a partner, communicate openly about needs, expectations, and creative solutions. Number four, if you're struggling with function, address it proactively, see your doctor, optimize lifestyle factors, consider natural or medical interventions. Number five, let go of shame, embarrassment, or the belief that this isn't important. It's part of comprehensive wellness. I need you to understand, this part of your health matters. It's not frivolous. It's not something to ignore or feel embarrassed about. Your prostate health, your cardiovascular health, your mental health, your relationship quality, all of these are connected to maintaining a healthy, intimate life. You're not too old. You haven't aged out of this. And staying active in this area is part of living fully, not something to abandon. Hit that like button if this video gave you clarity and confidence on a topic most men are too embarrassed to discuss openly. Share it with another man who needs to hear this because too many men are withdrawing unnecessarily, thinking they're supposed to. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm here to give you honest, science-backed information on topics that actually matter for your health and quality of life. And remember, the research is clear. Regular activity supports prostate health, cardiovascular health, hormonal balance, and overall well-being. You're worth staying engaged in all areas of health, including this one. Aging doesn't mean shutting down. It means being intentional about maintaining vitality in every way. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourself, you matter.